Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Perps. We are back, it's White Dwarf. This is the final of the White Dwarfs. I'm not sure what I'm going to do on Tuesdays. Might be a break day, might just have random videos popping up as and when I please. But we are looking at February 86. It was 95p at a Virgin Megastore, I assume in the UK. This was 87. <clears throat> I was a wee age of four at this point. So let's have a look what we got. We got some creepy ass witch on the front cover. Kind of looks goblin-esque. I have no idea what that is. We have a campaign for Warhammer fantasy. Look at Enemy Within. Very classic looking. Inside we get an open box, critical mass, curse of the bone, open box extra, frud, Illuminations, Out of the Garden, The Skaven Scramblers, It's a Kind of Magic, Heavy Metal, Dogs of War, A Trouble in Time, Judge Dredd, so that's towards the end, Letters and Gobbly Gook. So open box, I love the open box section, make sure it's straight on camera. The Price of Freedom role-playing game, West End Games. So it looks like... Uh, in this version, Russia has invaded the USA and you are fighting for freedom. Science and sorcery of an earth of the future. That's a weird one. Classic paranoia campaign back. And Watchers of the Sacred Flame, a multi-system adventure. We then get Adventures in Blackmoor. Oh, I love the old D&D stuff. I actually came across a thrift store that was selling them. The prices were too rich for me. I don't actually play d and I just love reading them and looking at the maps. If they were a, a more comfortable price for me, I probably would have picked up a few. But they were just that little bit too rich for me. I don't know what the going rate of these books are, but for me, it was too much. Uh, we then get a book review, a regular book review com column written by Dave Langford. So he talks about the Golden Horn, Heisman Pet, the Night Warriors, uh, the Vampire Lassat, Ladies of Marangrin, if that's how that one's said, uh, an anthology, Gollum in the Gears, a Sand Writer, Sword and Ice Magic, and Demand the Impossible. Not heard of any of those books, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Uh, in Ancient Times, Green and Pleasant Land. The British 1920s to 30s Cthulhu source book. That is great. And then we've got this weird tentacle that looks like a caterpillar wrapping its way around the cricket ball. Horrors of the Glen, a Scottish Highlands campaign. Uh, Death in the Pot. A strange pious, a horrific murder and a plea for help from a respected gentleman. And then Shadows of Dark Bank. So that's for playing Cthulhu in England, as opposed to a good old USA. Curse of the Bone, a modern Call of Cthulhu adventure for two to five investigators set in London. So obviously White Dwarf was trying its best to move Cthulhu over to London, I guess, at this time. The artwork. I love all the artwork. Student Hostel. I'm going to read this after we've gone through it because I just love the sound of it all. How was a car worth £1,195? <laughs> love it. Uh, little uh, map of London, or a section of London, I should say. Earl Dealer. Eric Green, a used car dealer, cultist, male, aged 49, British and resident of London. Map of the car showroom. Uh, what else we got? The sewer system, underground areas. There's a couple of ghouls hanging out by the looks of it. Uh, then we got a medical student, Kiram. I'm not even going to say that last name. Dr. Erica Flower. You know what? I might go through and steal some of these names for my sector 102. No one's going to know. Uh, well, we've got advert for grenadier models. The strength of 20 men. The swiftness of a panther. The brain of a garden snail. 
<laughs> Love it. Fred the Barbarian. I guess that's a... Oh, it's the graphic novel. How cool. Uh, Dragonlance. I've actually just bought myself a set of free Dragonlance novels at the thrift store. Nice and cheap, like I like. I'm going to start reading through them very soon. I've just got finished my current book. But this is campaigns to be used in, I assume, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Games Workshop in Baltimore. Look at that. We're moving stores over to the States. Fed the Barbarian comic. Some mail order uh, campaigns. All the stuff that we just probably read about. Two-page spread of the artwork for Warhammer. This stuff's beautiful. Ian Miller. I do remember seeing his artwork a lot, especially this bit. I love the way that everything looked creepy and had this weird neck and fish motif going on in a lot of his artwork. Marvel superheroes. Avengers Coast to Coast. Ooh, the second source book. I do not have that one. I have the game. I don't have this one though. Coast to Coast, second source book, advanced guy I didn't even know existed. Create new challenges for the Avengers or relive their greatest adventures from the past. Interesting. I have to look out for that one. Out of the known player characters in Warhammer Fantasy. Imperial gnomes. Physique characteristic skills, character profile, basic career, he could be a jester. Uh, gnome gods, look at this, Aringil. He is the gnome god of smiths and jesters. Amazing. Blood Bowl, I love it. Back when it was cardboard tokens and came in a little box for £13. And you get the Skaven team. How cool. So player one, Brett Brain Gulper. Very nice. That's a great mutant name if I've ever heard one. Scrag the Unclean. Sisk Forearms. And then Gart Smash Rip. <laughs> and then Normal Skaven. I'm totally stealing some of these names for use in my Judge Dread game. There's no way that I can't have a mooty that's called Breet Brain Gulper. Welcome sports fans. So it obviously goes through using Skaven in Blood Bowl. Very cool, very cool. Explains who's who, as it should. It's a kind of magic. Talks about using magic, I guess. There's a, yeah, in role-playing games... Oh, it's combining magic into a sci-fi game. So she's resurrecting, it looks like a robot, to her aid. Interesting. And then the stuff that I really love looking at, the figures, the fighter models. I'd love to find some, but people just charge so much for them when they've gone. The scalpers have twigged that the hobby is popular. They're buying them up quite quick and then sticking them at $100 a figure. I ain't paying that. I can't afford that. But I would love to paint some. I had him. I bought him at a car boot. He was thickly covered in paint. You wouldn't even know that was a mace. That's how thick it was. Some zombies. That man I caught I love. And as I now know, one of my YouTube followers has that model. You need to show me it. I want to see it. I'm deadly jealous. Uh, Judge Dredd fatties, look at these. They're so small. I've, I don't own any of these, but I've seen them in photos and they look so small compared to the current fatties. Chaos Dwarfs. Chaos Lavatory. <laughs> Lover. Goblins. I had a couple of these, I think. Maybe not these ones, no. I had some of this era, but not of them. Oh, there he is. I had him. Crazy Ed. Bod Gob. Heavy Metal. Who's this? This looks kind of John Blanchy. But it's... How annoying. It's not showing me who it is. It just says Heavy Metal. 
His picture's there. Is that John Blanche? I really don't know. So we got a battle droid. Fire demon. Ignore my phone. Goblin standard bearer. War of the Roses cavalry. Lovely models. Uh, oh, his name's Dave. No idea what his last one's going to be. Dave's adaption of the Judge SJS Judges to his own sci-fi game. So these were all Judge Dread models that have been converted. Uh, we then got... What's this? Angman Chaos Taker shows his defiance diorama of the sadly missed Citadel Giant Head and one of the dwarfs from the Dwarf Lord of the Legends box set. We then get Chaos Abound, the Chaos Warrior set. A splendid old Chaos Bro. Men at Arms. Oh, I guess this is meant. No, I'm losing where I am. Oh, this is just Chaos Abound, sorry. Splendid old Chaos Bros. Then we got Men at Arms with a paper banner. A Zote model. And the Fmir. Lovely. The paint jobs back then were proper grimdark. We talk about grimdark a lot nowadays, but this was the real shit back in the 80s. Then we got the limited edition figures, 95 pence. God damn. Buy all these up if I could at these prices. Beautiful green dragon, dwarf treasure hunter. A great fire dragon and a knightly hero. And then a blue dragon and sorceress. And then we got the talisman figures. The woodsman was 60 pence. Beautiful model. You got these three for two pounds, basically. And then these four for two pound. Oh, what a time. Uh, advert for some d and I believe. Dogs of War. Playing as a mercenary and a or getting mercenaries in role-playing games. It's got their price list. Nice, nice, like that. Uh, Warhammer Battle Stats, Advanced Dungeon Dragon Stats, other reading examples. Uh, the title for this article is, of course, stolen from a book called The Dogs of War, where it covers the organisation of a 70s mercenary operation in detail. So the same suggests giving you a read of that for future tech mercenaries. Uh, then some store called Beaties, boasting about the fact that they stock Warhammer. Gremlin Miniatures, Rune Quest, classic system. Chaos figures for sale, coming soon to a white dwarf near you, Derek the Troll. Spirit Games, London North... North London's Game Specialist, Leisure Games. So sad that most of these stores are probably now gone. The Games Workshop catalogue, the complete guide to everything that Games Workshop sells. Hobby Horse, Imperial Earth, Canterbury Software, Black Wolf, Not Just Stamps, The Untamed Land. And then the Judge Dread article, right, give me a second. Okay, so it's a two-page bit. It has a bit of a backstory that explains time travel in the Judge Dredd universe. So, pure fluff on this page. And then there's some GM notes. So this isn't in any way a campaign. It's explaining a way that you should play time travel, which is a common theme in Judge Dredd. He uses the Chrysler case, which is the Judge Child, and how that time travel in the comic created these timelines goes on to explain that as a GM you don't want to mess with anything too important because you can really like shoot yourself in the foot if you change the apocalypse war in your game your entire timeline has now changed and you've got to write up everything to where the judges currently are in the real time frame so don't mess around with important stuff for the most part they're saying if you do time traveling you kind of want it to be themed around keeping the status quo of the known history and not changing it too much, or setting up something that's not really going to affect anything. It's, it's an interesting read. 
glad to have it in the collection, but it, it's not anything, it's not a full campaign in any way, shape or form. It's just uh, explaining how you could use time travel in Judge Dredd. Then we got a few more adverts that shows the uh, artwork for the miniatures we looked at earlier, the different dragons. Then we got the letter pages, some more adverts, and I think we're there. I think we're done. White Dwarf back issues if you want to buy them, Gobbledygook the comic, and we are complete. So like I said, this is the last White Dwarf I've got for a little while. I need to work out which other ones contain Judge Dredd articles. If any of you have White Dwarfs with Judge Dredd articles and you've not seen them in this series of videos, do reach out. Let me know the number. It will really help me. I'm trying to find them all. And until then... Cheers for watching this mini-series on White Wolf. Bye-bye.